Hello everybody and welcome back to the Talking Wolves podcast. Hope you guys are keeping well and safe. My name is Dave and alongside me today is Matt Cooper. Matt, how's it going, man? Yes, mate, not too bad. Good to see you. How are you? Yeah, all good, mate. All good, thank good. you. Yeah, we're back for another podcast. We're going to be uh, talking about the end of the season today, uh, talking about those final three games against Burnley, Palace and Chelsea. We're going to be looking ahead to the Europa League uh, knockout stages. Uh, we're also going to be answering your questions and possibly even talking a little bit about some transfer rumours as well. But first of all, big shout out to our podcast sponsors at Pitch Football. Fantastic football app to go and check out. If you haven't already, I'll leave a link to that in the description of the video or the podcast. Uh, it's available on the Apple App Store uh, or the Google Play Store as well. Fantastic app just to interact with other fans really. You can put your predicted lineups, your predicted scores and you can write all sorts of elements of your team and as I say, interact with different fans from other clubs as well. So uh, yeah, Pitch Football app, big thanks to them and Check them out. Um, Matt, let's start off with the, the end of the Premier League season. I know it's been a couple of weeks now since those last three games, but um, I obviously want to gauge our thoughts on those and just talk about how we felt they went, really. Um, we're going to start off with a Burnley game, a midweek kickoff. Um, and let's start off with the lineup because the lineup for that game was uh, interesting, wasn't it? It seemed like Nuno really went for that with Vinagre and Adama both starting as wing backs. We saw almost. You know, we saw Jota, Jimenez, Pedenz and Dahmer all on the pitch at the same time. I don't think anyone would ever expect that from a, from a Nuno team. I think the last time we saw that really was Cardiff at home last season. Well, season before. When he played yeah, when, oh, yeah, as well. Played on. Yeah, yeah, I remember that and game. That's, yeah. I think that was that's, a good win. We all saw it and thought, Christ, he's going for it here. But yeah. in reality, we didn't. <laughs> and that's not Nuno's fault, but we just didn't really go for it. And I don't think Adama really works as a, as a right wing back. He's got he's got to play, he's got to play for the pitch for me. But it was good to see him try something different because we've been screaming out for a change of system or personnel. And he tried it and it, well, it nearly worked for what ninety five minutes. But don't know. <laughs> yeah. So what what do you think was wrong with it? I mean, we we attacked. We looked good. I mean, you look at the stats. We had 14 shots, only five of those on target again. Do you think Nuno knew Burnley were going to sit back and he just wanted to try and go at them all game? Or, you know, because if you think about it, other than, you know, Jimenez's shot was something sort of out of the blue, really. It wasn't like it was a clear cut chance. We didn't really have any other clear cut chances in the game, did we? No, I feel like we dominated the, dominated the game um, without creating real clear cut chances, which is a story of. Most of our games, really. Our chances are yeah. few and far between. It's luckily we've got Jimenez, who top, who uh, more often than not puts them away these days. So that was an absolutely fantastic goal, though, by the way. What a finish that was. It was so yeah, I think that's a, yeah. It's I think a, if we won that game 1-0, that, that goal would get so much praise. Yeah. Like It, it Super, was unbelievable. That. Superb. But again, it's just it's poor game management. Not from Nuno, but from, from, from the players. It's... We just retreat and we like we panic and it's it's the it's the Watford semi cup uh, semi final at a cup all yeah. over again and it's just so frustrating to watch like I just I just don't I don't know what happens I, I, I just can't can't fathom it just invite pressure I, onto us so much and especially a team like Burnley who if you say to them right have the ball put the ball into the box I'll rub their hands together because that's the way they play and in the end it it worked. Yeah, I think a lot of people were pointing the finger after this result, mainly at the referee Mike Dean. Even even Sean Dyche, I remember, you know, was commented about some of the questionable decisions just throughout the game. Um, and ob obviously, it came right to the end of the game, 96th minute, Chris Wood wins a penalty. You, you'd say he won the penalty and obviously he scored it. I know your thoughts, you have made your thoughts pretty clear on this, Matt, on social media, but this is such, a, again, a decisive decision, and this is, uh, or indecisive, I should say, and this is another reason why VAR is going to get a bit of stick, where really, it's it's not quite VAR's fault, is it, this decision? It's, you know, balls come in, Chris Woods, you know, he's, he, he's gone for the overhead kick, which he has got a right to go for, to be fair, and Doc's sort of hand is up there, and... Uh, Mike Dean's given it, which I get, but I also get why fans are angry at it. Uh, but the VAR there is always going to back the referee in that decision, isn't he? He's never going to overturn something yeah. like that. You're so diplomatic, Dave. I know. I've, I've <laughs> got to be, mate. One of us has to. <laughs> um, I, think it's a, it's, I think it's a stonewall penalty. You can't... Yeah. I, I get that it's instinctful. 
that you protect your face if a boot comes up and if something comes to your face, you put your arm up. But it's not really that close to him. When you and when you slow it down frame, frame by frame, and I, I appreciate that that's not the speed it's moving at, but he's he jumped like like that. And if it hits your arm, he's a penalty. It is a penalty, and it was. I think it was the right decision for me. But in my my point of view, and I got absolutely slaughtered for this, was then everyone's going to think it's a dark agenda, and it's not because if any other player had done the same, I'd have, I'd have said the same for them. But put your head in where it hurts. Worry about it later. It's, mm. it's those fine margins that um that we haven't qualified. That the reasons why we haven't qualified for Europe, and I'm not saying it's just that. But you look at like the Sheffield United game. Um, you know those those fine margins and just that lapsing concentration. I, mean, I don't know where Doc is for to be. You know, in the first place, he's running in from a position that I'm not really sure what he's doing. Um, but again, you look at you look at Cody and Bolly, and so they're just napping. They're just napping. And um, for me, get your head in where it hurts. Worry about it later. Appreciate that uh, fans say, well, you know, it, it's it's happened quickly, but. It's handball. It's handball. He's hit him on the arm, and he's not like he's right close to him. He's, he's jumping towards it. So yeah, no yeah. complaint to me. No complaints. But again, that wouldn't have happened if we wouldn't have shit ourselves and just retreated onto our six yard box like we normally do. We did. To be fair, like you know, we went we went for it. It was clear we went for it, but. It's also clear the last two minutes of the game we thought you know what let's just sit back now let's, we've done we've been able to do it for ninety four minutes let's absorb the pressure now and you 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 and I both know as soon as Burnley get the ball into the box they might win their to be fair Chris Wood missed an absolute city didn't he yeah, just moments before himself. and I thought you know what that could be the difference between us getting Europe and not and obviously then. in the end you know you know but um, yeah Burnley just pumping that ball into the box and I just know all it needs is. A, a ricochet, a deflection, or just want to just fall into the big man, and they they get that little bit of luck. But like you say, we might with my gold tinted glasses on at the time, I was a bit frustrated. But it, it by the letter of the law, it is like you say, it is a stone wall. Well, me, you, and you were arguing in the group chat, so I was like, it's a penalty, and you pair were like, shut you fat twat, you don't know what you're on about. <laughs> like, like, but I think once we kind of. We calm down. When you calm down, you actually yeah. watch it and see yeah, what happens. I was I was like, he's, he's bottled that, and then obviously I was like, perhaps I shouldn't have said that. Um, but it, it is a penalty. But we had a free kick on the right hand side about a minute before that. At Neto might Just have won. Get the ball in the corner, innit? Mate, and Bolly was up for it. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> Winning the game. It's like, <laughs> Just take it to the corner. They're trying to whip a ball into the box. So like, what are you playing at? It's just stupid, simple errors like that that are just highly avoidable. Uh, yeah, well, it was. I mean, that uh, that game. You know, we'll talk about it uh, after we've reviewed all three games. But you know, that game and obviously the Sheffield United game you highlighted earlier could be. Well, they they are big catalysts towards Wolves possibly. You know, falling out of the the top six. But we will we'll talk about that a bit more in depth uh, shortly after. They did bounce back though. Two 0 win against Palace. Um, I was quite surprised that Nuno sort of almost sort of reverted back to what you'd say is our standard way of playing. However, he did introduce Dendonka in for Sace, which was an interesting one. Um, looking back at it, um, someone that I know on Twitter highlighted that how, how much Sace struggled with Zaha, Zaha. earlier on yeah. in the season. Yeah, He got sent um, off. He got sent off, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah second booking, I that. think, yeah. But the fact that Dendonka is coming in, and he slotted into that quite well, and it was it was a very much straightforward win for Wolves, wasn't it? My Palace have been very, very disappointing uh, since the restart, and... Um, mm. Yeah, Pedence getting a goal with his head. I mean, that what. was a run. Like, oh, all it oh, needed oh. there, wasn't it? It was a very. Wolves looked dominant, but we hadn't looked close at scoring. It just needed that little bit of quality from Matinho, wasn't it? They just absolutely broke yeah, that defence. I mean, up. I mean, Palace were there to be to be got out. They'd not won in five, had they? They'd lost five it on the bounce. Longer than that. I think it was six. Something like that. I, think I, just, really I just thought the right ones on the wall. They're going to come tomorrow, and you absolutely spank us. <laughs> I um, think they all thought that. That Wolves managed the game well, but like in the first half, they look sloppy on the ball. Like Bolly, Bolly's been even Johnny. Or, yeah, B- Bolly was. Bolly's been poor since the lockdown resumed. Personally, that's what I think. He's not the same player he was before, and but um, that goal. I mean, it's it's vintage Doc, isn't it? Really, those kind of runs. So intelligent with his forward running. I know you know you know. I give him a, a bit of stick sometimes. People might think it's unjust, but it is is a is offensive. Um, kind of his runs and stuff um, 
that was just like a vintage dock. It was it was fantastic. But the ball for Martinho, it was just it was inch perfect. And I think yeah. probably only two players on the pitch who could have could have done that, and that was him or Neves. Um, and yeah, it's a fantastic goal, and good to see Pedence on the score sheet. He's um he's looked a, he's looked a good player since he's um it, since he's been introduced to the team. I'm kind of I'm, I'm glad he's got his chance because it looked like for a while he was going to be Catroni Mark Two and exiled, but. <laughs> Doesn't yeah. seem to be um, doesn't seem to be the case. I know he's been linked with a move away already, which I suppose you put two and two together and get nine as most journalists do. But um, but yeah, it was it was a really work well worked goal. But again, in the first half there was moments of sloppiness. I mean, Pally should have scored in a Jeffrey Schluck chance in the first half. But I think the second half Wolves were better and really really controlled the game in that second half and a bit of magic. From Adama um, on that right hand yep. side for Johnny's goal, which again was a was a, was a striker's finish. Yeah, I mean, I, I we'll go quickly go back to that Pedence goal. I think, like you say, that Matinho or Neves it would provide that little bit of magic on the edge, and that's all we needed. It it was obvious Wolves were the stronger team, but we just hadn't created anything as such. We just needed that little bit of magic. Uh, but we have done that once or twice before this season. I uh, I remember the you know where uh, Jota's over goal against Punic. Mm. was very similar to that. Jimenez just like dinking the ball over the defenders. And I, I can remember us doing it once or twice this season, but that one was just brilliant. Like the the fact, you know, Pedence all, almost knew what was going to happen as Martinho kicked the ball. Martinho into dock and then you're allowing arguably one of the smallest players in the Premier League to, to just score the easiest goal of his career and it's with his head. Um, you wouldn't, like have, say, well, you John, wouldn't have put money on Pedence's first goal from the Prem to be an head, head, head. <laughs> Yeah, no, exactly. He's busy though, I put it on Twitter. I said, yeah. I said a five foot four winger scoring a header, unbelievable. And someone put, well, yeah, it was an open goal though. I was like, all right. I mean, <laughs> point, mate, you know. he's, a, he's but, a busy um, player, man. He makes he, his runs are a lot different to what Neto's you know what I like and Jotters a lot. are. And I don't think you know, the, you know, when he's got a defender on him, he gets the ball and like flicks it over the head. Like have you seen that when he, he he's done yeah. it he does it almost every time he like he almost does like a sombrero flick over the head every time it's class when it and it, he's pulled yeah. it off a few times yeah he's he's like, he, he's a he's, he's, his runs are different to like Neto and uh, and Jota's like I don't think Neto or Jota would have been there for that goal I like uh, watching him I just don't think he, he doesn't look like a footballer to me he doesn't look like he should be able to do what he's able to do but the power. And the acceleration he can actually get behind the ball. He's a bit like Jota, I think, as well. And the fact that, you know, when Jota's on the ball, you don't actually think he's going to be that quick. But the way Jota, when he's on it, yeah. the way defenders bounce off him and just can't win the ball. I, don't, I, don't I think, think Pedence is. Just that it's like quick with the ball. Like some yeah, players are yeah. quick and when they get the ball, they're a bit useless. But like Jota and Pedence, they can actually like run at full speed and yeah. carry the ball yeah. well. But because he's got such a low centre of gravity. You'll be you'll be he's turning skilled, yeah. centre half easily because he's like he, when I play against someone small, obviously not the standard that they are. Like I'm quite a big yeah. fellow. If I play against someone small, I like I just get to run around because like, they turn and I'm still trying to find my feet. It's just, I'm, I'm saying it's, it's like you know, yeah. You know, sometimes the bigger defenders it, they turn like the Titanic, and yeah. before you know it, your player's already five yards ahead of you. So. Yeah, they're, they're right to um, knock off the ball as well, just because they're like so close to the ground. It's like, it's like Hazard, I know that's what people say. It's like Hazard, but he's not. But he's similar in terms of like stature and build. Like Hazard's yeah. got a massive batty as well, and he like uh, <laughs> like uh, Dan. <laughs> yeah, we got back. Yeah, yeah, yeah back off from for this. <laughs> no, um, I think you're right. But like, it, even when the defenders get a touch on the ball, by the time they're trying to get it under control, Pedence has got mm. the ball back and he's already passed. And like, you saw that so many times against Everton. You saw it once or yeah. twice against Palace. And I think he's it's good to see him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's good to see him getting that bit of game time as well. There's a couple of times with Burnley where he was driving forward the ball and what we ended up losing it, and it was like you've made the wrong decision there. Because I just yeah. I don't know. Perhaps he's trying a little bit too much to impress and get his chance, but I think that was one of his criticisms at Olympiacos. Like it, it's just his final decision was sometimes a little bit, a little bit wayward, but. No complaints from me so far. I think he's looked a really good player and hopefully we, we utilise... I don't think he's going to be like a world beater and start every game for us, but he's a very good player to have around. He's a, he's a different option. Although we can play in two or three positions, yeah. he's different to what we've got, really. And it'll be interesting to see. Obviously, I'd assume we'll keep him over the summer. It'll be interesting to see yeah, what it'll be like after yeah. a full season. Yeah, um, and, and like I say, I'll quickly touch on Johnny's goal. I think you're right. Adama's run then. The thing is with Adama, and I think I've said it in a podcast before and possibly even plenty of reviews, he's just a player that could possibly do nothing 
for 89 minutes. But that other minute of the game, when Adama gets the ball and turns up, he just needs that little bit of brilliance from him and he, he will create you a goal. It's happened so many times. And um, I think against Chelsea, which we'll talk about shortly, I think I was, uh, I was a little bit vocal about Adama because he just he just didn't seem... He just wasn't... He's still not clever enough off the ball. The guy could you know, take on every player and run past every player in the world. But off the ball, he still needs that little bit of work. Um, but, you know, I think that's that sort of stuff can be coached into you. And I'm, I'm hoping, and I think we all know, another full season under Nuno and Adama's value could skyrocket again next season. I think that's what we're, uh, what we're just, all hoping again. He misses quite a few big chances. I mean, there's one in, one in Palace, weren't there? One against Palace where he'd, he'd like broke through and it was like, I think it was against Palace, and like he he forced the keeper to make a save from like the right, and it was it was like a half chance. If he, if he'd have placed it, he'd have probably scored. But again, he, he's like I know his his goal return and assist returns a, a lot better this season. But yeah, the amount of games he's played and stuff, and the amount of good chances and good positions to get into, you'd, I think Tim Spears says the same. Like you'd expect more from someone who's. Apparent value is 130 million, which is a hands off warning if ever I've seen one. <laughs> I know, and uh, we'll move on to the final game of the uh, the Premier League recap. Final game of the season, Wolves just needed to equal or better Tottenham's result, or even better, just get a win to wrap up sixth place. And they came up against Chelsea, who obviously needed something out of the game to um to get top four. And it was a disastrous performance, wasn't it, Matt? Really <laughs> against Chelsea, it was. A weird, weird game. You look at the lineup again for Wolves. After Dendonka was pretty solid, I was surprised to see Sais come back in. Um, but again, Pudence dropped this time for, for Jota. We saw Neto start, which I think a lot of people were excited for because he hasn't had many starts. But what do you think went wrong in this game, Matt? Was it the team selection? Was it the way we set up? Was it a bit too defensive? And obviously, we didn't get the best of luck with um, the refereeing decision for that free kick either. I don't really know why he's not played Matinho and he's not played Adama because if you if you're a if you're an opposition fan or a player you look at Wolves you think Jimenez cracking player Adama so dangerous Neves and Matinho together they've got a great partnership you take Adama and Neves out of that uh, Adama and Matinho out of that you think bloody hell we've got a chance here we're up for this and you automatically yeah. give Chelsea a bit of a a royal up and I mean Jota's dangerous but. We all know what Jota's been like this season, in particular since the restart, and um, it was just it was just an utter shit show from start to finish. It was so bad. It was so so bad. And yeah, it's um, it was a, it was a terrible refereeing decision. Perhaps a little bit naive from Neto to get his foot up there because if that's one of our players, and you know that. Say Alonso puts his foot up on net on the edge of the box. You want him to go down and you want him to win the foul. And I think mm. he think he would, but uh, maybe being a little bit harsh there and on Neto, but no problems with the free kicks. As soon as they give it away, I said to my dad, "Like this is just going in because Mount's class and so is Alonso from the set pieces." Yeah. And what what followed after that for the second goal? Well, I'm gonna let you sum it up because. <laughs> You'll be just, just going for it. <laughs> what is it? Well, it's, it's another for me for for a team that def- his defensive record is very very sound in Wolves, and you know the the uh, you you look at our losses, the, the amount of games that we haven't you know haven't lost this season. You you'd think Wolves would be so much better set up defensively than this, but there's so many players you can pinpoint a blame on here. Um, you look. You look at the screenshot. Yeah, was it from our own free kick? I believe as well, or yeah, our own Cody attack. Cody pumped the ball up to Jimenez against Zuma and and Rudiger. Yeah, um, who, um, who yeah. certainly there to be got at because neither one of them is much cop. Um, yeah, not that we tested them. So yeah, the ball got pumped up. <laughs> I, I said you'd explain it, but <laughs> just, well, Jimenez. Like, well, like you say, Jimenez a- a- probably anyone's to blame. Um, yeah, they're always good in the air. Them two are, are, are great, especially Zuma, who's an absolute animal. Um, but yeah. again, there to be got at. And the ball's come straight back, and I'm not really sure what size she's doing. It, I think he's just ball watching. Yeah, he gets drawn out. So, oh, just it's just calamitous. And then Co, I don't, I don't really know what Cody's doing. I just, I, I, I don't really know between the pair of them what the thought there, but. It was funny to watch if you weren't a Wolves fan. You wouldn't look at that. You wouldn't look at that Wolves defense that game and think 
that he's like trying to get Europa League. You think these like had already been had already gone down in a relegation scrap. Like those kind of mistakes don't happen to a side who are who at the start of the restart were trying to get Champions League football. But Cody got a, a lot a lot of stick after that. But I don't know who, who's more to blame. Like I just don't know what Sace is doing. Like he come out and just like froze. You got, you got. Like I've seen someone put a screenshot of it on the other day. The 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 Sace's decision there was weird because mm. he's sort of marking the half space. So he, the actual position he was in was okay for the scenario he was in. He was sort of blocking off the, you know, the space in and around him. But then as soon as he closes down the ball, he's opened up a whole gap. But you see the start of that move for Chelsea. Johnny, who's our left wing back, is still in Chelsea's half. Um, and obviously he's re- like on paper he should be back there defending that as well. And then the fact that you know you got a, you know Patricio comes out. Obviously he took his legs in because he knows as soon as he sticks his leg out, Giroud's going to go down. He's going to give away a penalty. Well. Yeah, and then Cody. He's, it's almost like he's dwelled on the ball, isn't he? I don't know. I don't know. But then Giroud's almost just sort of jogged past him and, and smashed it in. So he's either got to be stronger there or just just wail it just wail it away get rid of it um, because if we go in there at half time at 1-0 you know second half all we've got to do especially with the Spurs result in the end all we've got to do is, is get one goal the fact then we've got to get ourselves two or three goals against a top four team just makes it so much more difficult uh, and uh, you know the final the final position in the table could be so much better if we just cut out silly mistakes. I know a couple of games this season we've struggled to score in, like that game against Chelsea. But if you cut out silly mistakes, we're going to get a lot more points from these games. Mm. I think I think the first three games after lockdown kind of tainted everyone's vision a bit. I was the same. I was like, you know what? We're actually we're actually a quality side. Like we're beating teams without getting out of second gear. But in hindsight, how bad were those three? West and Bournemouth and Villa. And then yeah. when it, it's mattered and we come up against a tougher test, we, some say bottled it, some say haven't been good enough, but all in all, we failed the test. That's that's how I see it. And our season in in the Prem and you know t- not taking Europa League into consideration with the really tough running that we've got, should we beat Olympiacos, was over in two minutes. But those two goals, it, it was just went down the shitter within... Two minutes and one silly error um, uh, uh, has, has cost us, really. But again, it's those fine margins. Like I said, you look at the Burnley goal and the Sheffield United goal. Is it a lack of concentration? Um, is it ability? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I personally, I like Cody. I like what he brings to the side. Sometimes his defensive one-on-ones is questionable, but his distribution is very good. He organises well. But then some players, uh, some fans call for his head. It's like I, I, I don't know. Like I always think, if you can bring some, if you can bring someone in who's an improvement, you do it. And but, and I don't think there's room for sentiment in the top echelons of of European football. But some fans seem to think that that's being negative, but it's not. It's just you want you want to strive for better. And if if it if it makes financial sense and. It's like if Harry Kane was like, became available, would would fans say no because we've got him in it? Of course you wouldn't. If Harry Kane's available, you go and get him. You know, what I mean? it's like if you can yeah. improve and it makes sense, and you can't improve in positions that may need improving because players aren't available, then then you do it. You you, you improve what you've got, and that's that's how you build. But I know we're talking about the Chelsea game, but I think there does need to be a shake up. I think they need. Three, four, potentially five, but not squad players. We need players who are going to come in and improve the eleven because we need to be taken to that next level. Now we've we've finished seventh twice in a row, which is considering in the championship two years ago is great, and I've got that perspective. But we kind of stood still a little bit. All right, we got a bit better points tally, but the position we were in at the start of lockdown compared to now. Um, we, we we have thrown it away, and I think sometimes it was a, maybe a, a lack of quality where I think better players may not have made those mistakes. So I think four or five players with two or three coming in to actually improve the eleven. Because if you look at recruitment the past year or so, Catrone, 
whether you think he was good enough or not. Personally, I didn't. Hasn't worked out. Vallejo was, uh, yeah, disastrous. Um, Jordao is uh, potentially one for the future, but from what I've seen, don't think he's going to probably play for Wolves uh, consistently. And Neto's been been great. He's a real gem. And um, Pedence again, good player. But with how long have we waited to see him? The recruitment has been really poor, really poor, and we can't afford to have another window where. 25% of our signings have been good enough to start and the rest, the 75% have, have either sat in under 23s or left. Well, I think I think you're right. you got 75% there, like you say. You look at Catroni and Vallejo. We're both brought in. I think on paper, everyone expected those two to come in and, and to be first-team players and, and to rival the likes. I think we all expected Vallejo to take over Bennett's place and I thought we all expected Catrone to be a strong rival for Raul Jimenez's place of the team. I think we're all, uh, most people are excited for those transfers, but I, f- I think, you know, when you're spending, what was it, 16 to 18 million on someone like Patrick Catrona, you are expecting at any level of football um, to, to get a, a good return back off that. And it obviously didn't quite work out. So it's, it will be, I think it is a big window. Mm. I think a lot of people aren't expecting um, money to be spent much, but I think Nuno has has realised ever since January, really. You know, he's made a couple of comments about squad size, hasn't he? And I think um, I'm expecting to see three, four, possibly even five first-team players through the door. I think Wolves have got to try their best to utilise the loan market a bit more as well. We did it so um, well in like, the Championship, but since we've come up, we haven't really... Even no, the first, even the first season though we had De Donker on loan. Jimenez, okay, that yeah. was our obligation to buy. Jimenez was on loan. Johnny was on loan. Like you got three players there who are still first team players that we had on loan. And other than De Donker, whereas it was sort of an obligation, the other two, if they were rubbish, then we could we could have been them off after half a season mm. or a full season, and you've saved yourself what in their, their case 45, 50 million pounds there. Um, I think we've got to try, but there's so many big teams now and, and contracts running low. I know it's ridiculous. Hammers Rodriguez, mate, if, if you get Mendes involved and say, right, we want to take him for six months to a year on loan, we'll try and cover you know most of his wage or half his wage. Real Madrid will be will be happy to do that and we get an obligation to buy. If he's good, we'll buy him. Happy days. And I think I, I was so surprised when we didn't utilise that more. We only had who Vallejo on loan. Um, and, and especially with us being in Europe I think it was so short-sighted that we didn't invest in the loan market a lot more before yeah, I think their was, excuse was that the qualifications were still going on when it closed I it think after, they were scared to bring in those players was it after the United game in the cup when Nuno said we need players it yeah was, in January yeah, we yeah, signed one yeah, right, that's the first time we've ever heard him really speak out like a message to the board about transfers but I'm not entirely sure I buy that Nuno wants a small squad um, oh, he's mate. He's 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 complained about I, it too I, I much know. now. The last, I'm not 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 recently. Not entirely sure that but I, I since the turn of year, he's that, definitely said it three or four times it that as they need to as it was the then. And luckily, we've and been I think okay. that's why injuries, I think it, that January was. It's like it's like the Battle of the Sun in January, weren't it? It was bodies everywhere. Like we we really <laughs> struggled. Um, yeah, yeah, with with injuries, right. I mean, Vinagro was out. Was a was a darn had an injury too. Um, there was, there was Johnny, there was a few, was out Johnny well. yeah, Bolly, and before you know, yeah. you've got like one of the under sevens populating your bench. Um, well, the, the main thing is, is still Raul Jimenez. If he gets injured, like who are you relying on for goals in that team? I don't since the restart, right? If, yeah, well, that's what I mean. Since the restart, if genuinely if Jimenez got injured, you got Jota who looks out of sorts since the restart at least. I, I, and then who's going to play up front? Who can you partner with up front? Who would you play up front in a three striker system? Who could you play up front up with, alongside Jota in a two striker system? You, no I can't one. think of anyone. Jota would have to lead the line on his own, and and it's you can't really, you know. Jota's been really, really poor. I you, don't get it. Such a confidence yeah. player, and it's a shame. Enough, you know, you know, he's performed well in the Europa League this season. I hope we can uh, we can see him back to his best on um, on Thursday against Olympiacos, but it, it's going to be an interesting summer for sure. We'll we'll talk about uh, transfer rumours and stuff a little in a little bit as well. Uh, but Matt, we're going to look ahead to the Europa League. We are playing Olympiacos, obviously that's classed as our second leg. But from there, if we do get through all the rest of the games, are in Germany. They're one-legged ties. We'll play either Sevilla or Roma if we get through this one. 
most probably Manchester United if we get through that one. What, what what do you think? Let's talk about the game against Olympiacos first. What do you think ahead of this game? We've seen the news Jose saw their goalkeepers out. How do you rate Wolves' chances at one one? Well, if we don't beat them, then we don't we don't have, we no you don't deserve to win it. I know obviously you won't if you don't beat them, but might be funny. <laughs> like if you don't score a goal, you're not going to win the game. <laughs> Sometimes we have to score goals. It's true though. Look, if you if you want to. Win something like that. Eventually, you are going to have to beat the best. And if we can't get past Olympiacos, and our chances against either Roma, uh, Sevilla, or Man United are fairly slim, because I'm not no disrespect to Olympiacos, but the the three teams I've just mentioned are, are better than Olympiacos. Whether they're better than yeah. Wolves on the day, I don't know. Sevilla was a team that I really didn't want because they're Europa League specialists. The, the amount of times I've won it recently, um, Roma. Um, it's got uh, quality, uh, haven't they, all for the team? Yeah, the, 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 but I think I think we can match them. United have had a, a great turnaround since the um, since they brought Fernandes and since the uh, since the restart. But then they fought like the game against West Ham, like they were they were dreadful. So uh, even Leicester, I think they were a bit ropey last yeah, game of the season. Yeah. And you know they're going to get a penalty at some point anyway, so that never helps. But if we don't, if we if we don't beat Olympiacos, then we don't deserve to crack on with it anyway. Because we're a better team than then, so it's uh, I can't I can't see us losing it. Depend it depends how we turn up. If we turn up against how we did against Chelsea, I wouldn't be surprised if they beat us. But play like we did against Everton, which is probably the only time in lockdown where I thought, God, we're playing some really good stuff here. If we, if we turn up yeah. and play like we did against Everton, we'll we'll put three or four past them, but. As we found out since the restart, we're not sure what Wolverhampton Wanderers are going to get at the minute. I just hope the break's done them good and we go in and we have a go and we see them off. Yeah, and I, I, I thought, to be fair, I've just checked, I thought the Greek uh, league no, the finished Caledon. quite early. Uh, yeah, I, and I've just realised, I thought it was one of those that sort of quit like at the start of lockdown, but obviously they have carried on. Olympiacos have won that league uh, quite comfortably in that, so they're going to be they're going to have that little bit of momentum going into it. You'd think on paper, you know, like looking at both teams, that Wolves should beat them, and it was a weird game, wasn't it, the first leg? But I think, like you, like I, I think I said it after Espanyol, I, across two legs, Wolves have got a good chance against anyone in the world. I said that against mm. Espanyol, and I think, you know what, I'd, I'd still look at it and think now even across one leg. Wolves have got a chance against most teams in the world. Um, but like you say, if genuinely, if you want to win it, you've got to beat teams like Olympiacos. Yeah. yeah. Sevilla Roma, I think, is going to be a very difficult game. Manchester United, you know, we know what they're capable of. We play them, what we've played them four times this season already. And um, what well, we've had, we've got, no, we, we've drawn against them home and away. We've drawn Boston. against them again at home in cool, the man. cup. And it was a narrow defeat in the cup. Yeah. Obviously, they've bolstered their team. They've looked a little bit stronger. They look. You know, more informed now, scoring goals. But genuinely, again, that could be a tight game. And I've I've just got a weird feeling after this sort of negative week or so, where in my opinion, I know we've not really spoke out a, a huge amount. In my opinion, I would have snapped your arm off for seventh place. And I'm still obviously I am gutted that we've missed out on definite qualification for the Europa League next season. But I've still got a weird feeling that you know we're going to turn up and do something now over the next few weeks. One game. You know, if we turn up, you know what it, you know what it's going to be like. Pedenz is going to want to prove a point against Olympiacos, and I think the front three should probably be Adama, Jimenez, and, and Pedenz. Mm, uh, uh, I'm sure you'd probably agree with that, maybe. Yeah, and I too would have would have snapped your arm off for for seventh place, um, regardless of whether you qualify for Europe or not. I said with you, Europa League, want a good run in that. Which if we beat Olympiacos, you'd say we've had a good run. Get to a quarter yep. final, I think that's I think that's a very good yeah. run. Um, I said between I said tenth for tenth tenth or twelfth would be good enough for me if we had a good run, and here we are in seventh. The reason why I'm pissed off is because we were three points off third place. That's what's annoying. So that's why I'm not snapping your hand off for seventh because it's always what could have been. And we said when we did the podcast um, before the restart, like this this season is an opportunity for Wolves to do something really really special, and that can still happen in Europa League, but. In in the Premier League, it's been a real letdown and a real disappointment for me. Um, but hopefully, in the Europa League, we have that kind of spark again, and, and we do well. Look, I don't I don't think we're going to win it, but 
I just hope we don't go out of a whimper. I hope we really have a go. And and who knows? But yeah, I just I just hope we we have a go and and um, that the, the, the lads make us proud. Yeah, hundred percent. And I am I'm really looking forward to it. It's gonna be a, uh, it's gonna be a great game against Olympiacos, I'm sure. And I'm hoping that we can turn up. Hoping we can get through to the next round because I think once you got Wolves lining up against teams like Sevilla and Roma, you know it's going to be. Uh, a really tasty game, and I think Wolves will give a game to to most of the teams left in the competition. There, um, we'll quickly let's do the transfer rumours first, Matt. We've got yeah. loads of questions which we'll fire at after, and I think you know we'll quickly talk about them. Um, Ryan Bennett looks like he's possibly off. Norwich uh, have inquired about him because it looks like they've got some interesting current defenders. I mean, it look it's pretty obvious, Matt, that Ryan Bennett's future isn't at Molyneux, and I think yeah. Norwich is more or less for him and his family the perfect place back to go, isn't it? Yeah, and um, he's not good enough for Wolves. I think as a bit of business, it's it was it was a great bit of business. He was good in the championship, wasn't too bad in the league last season. I think he surprised everyone, yeah, didn't he, yeah. in the Premier League? I think he was one of the players when we went up that I think a lot of fans expected to probably yeah. you know replace quite quickly, and he, he held his own for most of yeah, last season. But those are the players that you've got to you know you've got to get rid of eventually if you want to. You want to improve, I think. Well, that's what you said. Like you said, yeah. you can't, you ain't got room for sentiment, and exactly. that's exactly what, what they've top. done with that one. That corner sentiment yeah. was got, what got us relegated to League One. Um, but he's not good enough for Wolves. Is, is he good enough for the Premier League? I'm not too sure. But he's a cracking Championship centre half, and whatever happens to him, I, I wish him, I wish him all the best. He's not, he's not good enough to play for this current Wolves side, but he's been a good servant to the club. I think him and Nuno may have had a falling out after the Everton game away this season, which is maybe yep. one of the reasons why he's been kind of ushered out. But like I said, uh, been a good servant to the club, been a good player at times and whatever he does in future endeavours, I, uh, I, I wish him all the best. Um, striker situation, this is going to be, I think they're talking about the whole of some of that. Raul Jimenez, uh, possibly on his way out. Paulinho of Braga, possibly coming in. We've got Paulinha as well from Sporting, just to confuse Matt as it was on loan at Braga. God, you're let's talk about the whole Jimenez. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, let's talk about Palinho. Uh, Palinha. Palinha. Yeah. I, I noticed your finance earlier as well. Finance, I didn't yeah. Call mate, just in yeah, case. Get, get that clip, bro. Patti Cotrone. Radi Tomas. Classics. Um, <laughs> Raul Jimenez, Matt, I mean... The, yeah, I think I think the Manchester United thing was a bit of a throwaway comment from the Portuguese press uh, regarding Palinho, but then there was a pretty hefty claim from AS that there have been uh, you know Juventus are close to making an eighty million pound you know bid or you know an eighty million pound move for Jimenez, and I think we all know how big and how crucial Raul Jimenez is, but that sort of money mate, for any player in this current Wolves team you can't be turning down close to eighty million pounds, can you? I think for someone who's twenty nine who's had two very good seasons. To yeah. get, uh, was it was it how much money was it like eighty three million or something daft like that? Eight like million, million euros, so it's probably yeah uh, close to about seventy five million. Um, we paid what thirty twenty eight twenty nine for him potentially yeah. thirty to make that kind of return already in, in a year. Yeah. Yeah, financially, it, it makes sense, and I don't think anyone's going to pay that much for him anyway. But he's going to be continue to link with clubs like that and. I'd be gutted if you left, but if someone came in with that kind of money, you can't you can't say no. And you know what? You can't stop him. He's come to Wolves. He's done fantastically well, and it wasn't really part of Benfica's plans too much. Only came off the bench, and he's proved everyone wrong. And um, he deserves to play for one of Europe's elite. He does. He's proven that. He's proven that he's now a world class striker. And I think at the age of twenty nine, he knows his his days are. Not numbered, but you know, he's coming towards the, the middle slash latter end of his career. Um, for a player that doesn't over rely on his pace, I think he'll have a bit more year, a few more years left in him. But he might want that big move, and he might want to move now while his kid's still really, really young, and have them grow up in a different place. He, he might not want to move that kid on in a year when he's grown up learning English or being around. You know, probably not going to be speaking much at the age of one. But you know, you, you want that black stability, don't you? <laughs> Raul. Um, but you know, you don't. You, you, you got you got a family and stuff. You, you think you do think about these things. So I'm not well, sure. I think for him now it's going to almost be a perfect time if he's going to up sticks. Exactly. It's going to be now when you kids, can't, you know. You can't you know. blame him, and he's been he's been tremendous. And I'd, I'd be absolutely gutted if he left. But when you're not competing at the top, and you've got players such as Neves and Adama and Jimenez, I'm afraid these things are going to happen, and the top clubs are going to cherry pick. 
our talent. It will be interesting to see how many of these players still want to be part of the project and we're not in Europe. I suspect the only player who would possibly leave is Jimenez, but I wouldn't be surprised if someone else did too. Cause I'll I'll be intrigued because most of them have joined when we're in the championship or not even in European football. Uh, of course, they've probably been solar projects, but I think everybody in that club probably didn't realise how quick they were going to get it and how well we've done again this season. So I'm mm. hoping you know that 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 sort of common sense part of it is enough for them to stay. I don't think Jimenez is the type of player to refuse to play as well. You know, you get those transfer no. sagas where players will refuse to play because uh, the transfer window goes on a long time. And this is the type of rumour that could go on way into October when the transfer window shuts. Um, but it, it's going to be a very, very interesting one. Like I say, I think £80 million pounds is, or €80 million, Euros, sorry, is a lot of money. And for probably all the players in our team, possibly with the exception of maybe Adama, I'd I'd possibly, you know, ask for a, a tad more. But even Adama, I think I'd have to have a, a long sit down and think about that sort of money, to be honest. So, um, I think, I think deep down, if Wolves accepted an offer, he would go. He's not been forcing. Oh, a it's move, not like he's, he's not refuse, exactly. Be, yeah, he's, he's not, not been exactly contract. rejecting moves. As if he, if he took a look at how he's talking in lockdown, he wasn't exactly yeah. playing moves down. He was openly speaking and naming clubs, so it's obviously on his mind, but I don't think he's the sort of player to go out in the open saying, oh, I want to leave, but I think if I think if a bid came in for like 70 million from, I don't know, say like Atletico Madrid or somewhere like that, or like Barcelona, and Wolves rejected it, I think that's when you might see a little bit of movement from him in terms of what's going on. So I don't think anyone's yeah. going to pay that for him though. Well, it's gonna be. I still don't think. I'm surprised Juventus have even been rumoured well, without that amount of money. I can't pounds, see. Pounds to spend nah, on nah. A striker, no probably, yeah, probably sixteen a load of players or whatever. Who, who knows? Yeah. Um, the uh, well, his replacement or possible backup is Paulinho uh, from Braga. But I know you for thirty million pounds. I know you're not a big fan of this move, are you? Or you don't think it's, you know? It's not. He's not, not the big a big name, fan, is he? but I just feel it's a. We also the same about him and as like, oh, well, you know, he, he, you know, he might, he's probably not good enough for the Prem, but I just feel a little bit underwhelmed by it. I've been seeing him play and stuff like he's obviously scored a load of goals, but I don't know if, if he's brought in alongside him and as like, you know what, fair enough, he's got good pedigree this season. He scored a, a load of goals, but I don't know. I, I can't help but feeling underwhelmed. And if we get eighty million for or seventy five million for all, how much of it is? then mm. I'd probably want us to be spending a little bit more on a striker with a bit more bit more about them. He's obviously done well in the Portuguese league and, and done well in Europa League, but I don't know. I just, it's a bit older as well, isn't he? He's, he's still, you know, he's what, 27, 27 28 as well. Yeah. And that's not yeah. me writing him off. And of course, if he's on to walls, I'll get behind him. I want him to do his best as he can. But you're asking me now as, as a Braga player... D, would you spend 30, 35 million on him? And the answer is no. And our, our good friend of the podcast, Alex Goncalo, she's, he said the same. Like, the, um, <laughs> you're laughing at you. <laughs> uh, I just shook my head. I didn't say the word. <laughs> I, forgot, um, I forgot you could see me. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, even he said, like, the, the price is ridiculous. It's so overinflated. So, again, I trust Alex's opinion on Portuguese football. And I just think it is. A little bit o- overpriced, especially in the current climate. So, I don't know. It sounds like Wolves are trying to get the price down. To be fair, but yeah. it's uh, but this uh, it's a bit like that Nelson Oliveira situation. If you if they wanted him that bad, Wolves they'd just spend the thirty million on him, wouldn't they? And the same with Nelson Oliveira, they were they were haggling for two million quid. If you wanted him, you'd just pay the two million extra quid and get him. So, so glad um, we didn't. We are. We'd have been stuck with him now. I don't, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, let's move on to the questions because we've got loads of questions more about transfers as well. So I'm sure we'll uh, get some stuff in. Guys, always keep an eye out on the social medias because we always ask for questions before uh, the podcast as well. Um, we've had a couple about the Europa League we'll talk. Uh, we'll start off with Sam, Sam Banks. Um, if we sign Alan St. Maximin, who is also an, another player linked with Wolves, or a bit of a throwaway link, if I'm honest. Um, which of our four wingers would you sell? So I think basically Sam's saying, I think everyone knows there's enough wingers in the squad, but if St Maximin was available and you had to replace a winger, which one would it be out of our four probably, wingers? Probably Jota, because I think they'd go for a similar price. And I'd probably that would probably offset the books a little bit. 
Um, I don't think... Who do you think is a better player out of those two? That's a hard <laughs> um, question. T- uh, Jota on his day, but yeah. how often is he on song at the minute? So Maximan's yeah. really, really entertaining to watch. He's also really entertaining Point. to just have a round. Then he's a, he seems a top fella. Mm-hmm. But, um, uh, look, Jack was not going to go because he's no son, but if I was going to sell someone, I think it'd be him. Um, because I still think you'd get 45, 50 million for him. I mean, he's got like 15 goals this season, something like that. I think people will look at that and think hey, he's, he's had a good season, but he's just he's just too inconsistent for me. And I think it would probably be Jota because potentially not probably going to make much more on him, maybe 20, 25 million. Neto is certainly one for the future. And I think Adama at the minute is irreplaceable unless you got someone like some Maxi Man so I think that's if I had to replace someone it possibly I'd only sign some Maximin if I got rid of someone like Adama mm. although it would be amazing to see them both in the sort of same lineup. but regarding that link by the way guys that was a rumour back in Feb I think from the Mail who posted it and they said if Wolves were to lose Adama this summer, they would go in for some Maximin. Then they did a big article about who, which positions every Premier League team wanted and the players they were looking at. And Wolves wanted wingers and strikers, according to them. And Sir Maximin was the only player on that list for Wolves. Hence why the report and rumour got has been spoke about again this week. So there's it's, been really nothing fresh on that for, what, six months anyway. Tedious so. link, isn't it? Really? Yeah, yeah, very tedious, yeah. Um, who knows yeah. now that the takeover hasn't happened? Right, he, might, he might be able to get him on the cheap. Yeah, but we're a small club according to Newcastle anyway, so... You might know. be able to get some well, slashing to socks as well from Sports Direct. <laughs> part of the deal, I Mike match, match Lonsdale trainers and 30 million, <laughs> we'll have him. Um, Kieran Barker said, we fail, uh, we're failure to qualify for next season's Europa League. Uh, oh, no, will failure, sorry. Will failure to qualify for next season's Europa League make it more difficult to keep hold of our best players or do you think the only real pull would have been Champions League with Europa League? Slash no Europa League. Well, I don't really... Un- I'd assume he means... Do you think the only real pull would have been... Champ- <laughs> I, I, I think what he's trying to say is... Do you think being in Europe or not next season is going to have a big pull and a big you know, big thing on, on that? Acquisition big effect on keep, yeah, keeping our players, yeah. I, I think not so much on retention, but more so on acquisition. You're probably not going to attract the top, top players that we could have in the Champions League or even in the Europa <laughs> League. I think... I think players really value playing in Europe, more so Champions League, obviously, but I think it is a massive selling point. If if a, if a club like West Ham comes in for them and it's Wolves, I think what Wolves have got over West Ham was Europa League football, but now it's kind of like, well, I can go and live in Wolverhampton, I can go and live in London. And I think the only players you might attract is potentially... Um, you know, we, a lot of Portuguese players who are going to come and settle really quickly, or you know, but I think I think it will a- affect acquisition more so than retention. The only player I can possibly see going is him, and as I've just said, but I think if we don't get European football the season after, then that's when I think we'll have a mass exodus. Yeah, I think I agree with you there. I think yeah, uh, Wolves going to remain competitive. We've got to remain up there. Top, top seven, top eight teams in the league really con- consistently. Mm-hmm. And the fact we've done it for two years already is fantastic. And I think I think we should have no issue really because how the club is at the moment. No issue with keeping players. I think possibly attracting interest, like you said, is, could be the uh, the biggest issue. Um, yeah. Tom Rouse has said, have we failed this season if we don't get European football for next season? Or does it give us a better chance of top four or better next year? That's quite an interesting point, actually. Yeah, you look at Leicester this season, and I know they've had a shit finish. Not they've not had any European football, have they? Have they? Yeah. <laughs> have they? <laughs> um, they? Um, and they, you know, will fight. I mean, they were like so they second for ages or third, like, yeah, like second and third, yeah. Clear or uh, uh, mm-hmm. United at one point. I know they fell apart, but I think having no European football for them has, has really helped. So. Every time I've seen Leicester, apart from the Southampton game, when we played them, I thought they were poor. Like I didn't really understand the whole. We should have been them both times. Yeah, as yeah, well. of course. And I think um, I don't think it's I don't think it's a f- in the grand scheme of things, it's probably not a failure. It's a failure because the position we were in with seven eight games to go. But who knows? We 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 might be able to push on now and get 
top four or five next season. But I think with United looking a lot better, Chelsea have, uh, have brought in three or four really quality players in, if they get Havertz over the line. I think yeah. Everton will be better. Under Ancelotti with a pre-season with him. I think Spurs will be better with Mourinho. You know, all of a sudden... You're Arsenal at, will be better as well. Yeah, with Arteta. He's done a really good job there so far. Won a, won a trophy. All of a sudden, you're looking at five, six, seven, eight teams potentially better than Wolves and this is where it's. I think it, this is why this season has been so frustrating because this has been a really good opportunity and next season is going to be even tougher yeah it is, it is going to be interesting and um, you know Europe, no European football less games could give us that extra push however you know we've taken the momentum from Europe in a lot of mm. games you know we beat Besiktas late on and then went to Etihad three days after and beat Man City Um you know, Espanol, we did lose in Spain, but then, you know, we used that to go to Spurs and beat them as well. You know, it's not like it, it's hindered us as such. Our, our record after European games has actually been not too bad in the league. So I think that'll be very interesting, I think, next season to compare. By the way, I like all these data analysts that have appeared on Twitter over the last week. I do like yeah. some of them. Are, they are, to be fair, a lot of the threads that people have been putting regarding the club or regarding players that we've been linked with have been... Uh, been really good actually to read and stuff so um, the one that was it Ryan, Is it Ryan yeah Plant? big Ryan yeah Ryan Plant yeah that was a great friend I did have that saved on my phone about um, the, the one that he put up I think was a really well measured debate um, it, was, it was a tremendous friend I did message him saying oh, that's actually really insightful and it's not just bashing players but then I, I saw another one where it was like um, the reasons why Wolves have kind of bottled it um, his words, not mine. It might not have been his words, but um, I did think we bottled it, by the way. Um, but it was like no squad depth sometimes, um, a bit naive in games, and the reasons why Wolves, uh, you know, you know, not excuses for this is like because you think the referee doesn't like Wolves and VAR. And it's yeah, like, it's so I true because most of the decisions against Wolves did are you... offsides and stuff. Yes, yeah. they're the annoying. It's but, annoying. Yeah, but. It, it, it's off, if it's offside it's offside it's not like they've made it up yeah I do agree with yeah. that it's, it, the, the one I liked was he did a, a comparison of uh, goal contributions by substitutes this season versus last season and last season there were so many times Cavalero would come on and popped up with a goal or assist that had won us points whereas this season I think it only happened it's only happened a number of times Catrone come off the bench twice or three times and scored goals or got an assist Pedro Neto as well a couple of times and I think Adama once or twice on there but last season had quite a big big difference in the amount of goals we were scoring and whereas Nuno like I said earlier we haven't had a backup for him in for half the season um, maybe you could say Neto and Cavalera although they're quite different as players you know that's been that almost like for like substitution but like we said earlier the, about the squad depth it's um a lot of it goes hand in hand, really. We do need to uh, mm. to possibly look at that again this summer, and who knows? That could be a big difference in his, you know, the amount of draws we got. Changing one or two them of them to wins, and you're looking at top four again. All if buts and I just maybe. Think we need a we need a plan B. Yeah. If you're looking at Nuno at Valencia, sometimes he didn't even play with a back five. He went with a four, and then like a, a holding midfielder behind two central midfielders, like. The, the games like you know Richie's at home for it do we need to play five at the back I just I just don't think we do but it's even Burnley tall. was we, it Burnley yeah, we just need to have a, 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 a sort of change in shape or like a plan B because it's so predictable what we're going to do and yeah that's I, I think uh, a plan B possibly a plan C is something that needs to be looked at but I don't think he will because he's too stubborn and his philosophy is his philosophy and you know he's got got to where he is in, in his career. Obviously, he's a very talented man and knows a lot about football and has has done great things at Wolves. And if I was him, I would probably trust his process too because he lives and breathes it. Whereas we mm-hmm. just you know we see it once every for ninety, 90 minutes, minutes every week exactly like yeah. they literally live and breathe it and see it on the training pitch every game. So he probably just get fed up of fans telling him that he needs to change the system and stuff. But <laughs> mostly us mm. too. <laughs> Yeah, probably. I can't, I can't imagine yeah. he sat here watching Talking Wolves. Though. Yeah, yeah. Someone's going to message him. Can you skip to fifty-eight minutes on the podcast? Yeah, just time stamp before. Yeah. So <laughs> um, someone, uh, Dan here, Dan H- uh, Hume, has said people are being a bit on, un- bit unrealistic about the pulling power we don't have now. We may have Is no European competition. 
Uh, I'm, I don't know. I just I assume fans. Um, I, I think he's saying basically we've signed some more than unbelievable talents in our team, and that was back in the championship. Who would you be your ideal transfer targets next year? God, we get asked so much, don't we? It's hard. It's hard to actually think of. Like, obviously, I did a video on on the channel about five forwards we could look at. Which I think were genuinely, maybe other than Belotti, who I put as number one, spoilers, I think the other four would genuinely possibly come in as, as backup options or, or at least rotation options for Raul. But it's so hard to pinpoint transfer targets. I think what we can say is positions that we think would be wise. Yeah. Uh, a, a striker. Uh, Everyone goes with Diaz, don't they? But from listening to the um, the TFO football podcast and the uh, stuff that they do, if you, you, if you do like a lot of insight and tacticals, are really good. Go and check them out. Obviously, subscribe here first and like leave a like. <laughs> um, but they were like, Diaz isn't as good as they maybe first thought and struggles against the top sides, which concerned me a little bit because of the price tag being uh, slapped on him. But I think we can all agree that a left-sided centre-half is something that they need to go and get. Well, that's what the teams... A report from Sky Sports seems to think that's what we were looking at. But I think centre-back, uh, another right wing-back, depending on the situation with... Sanderson slash uh, Matheson. I'd probably be more comfortable with Matheson there, if I'm honest. Possibly another central midfielder and another striker. I think four of those players there. Mm -hmm. and, and again, the, the usual bulking out of the under-23 squad, I think uh, would be good. I'd like to see Campana, see what happens with him in the summer. I think, you know, very, very surprised he didn't get a run out um, in any of the league games. You know, when free, I don't know if he was in the Everton squad, but, you know, when we're, we're quite comfortable against your Palaces or Everton's, you know, you got opportunities like that, like Jordao came on for a little bit. But just give the likes of Raul a rest when you're two or three in the up. You know, the game's done and dusted. You ain't going to concede four goals, you know what I mean, or, or three goals. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Do you quite think surprised. you'll ever see him, like, play for Wolves consistently? Campana? Yeah. Probably not. Probably not. I think that... That's the, I saw a lot of people moaning the other day. I think it, I can't remember who it was with. I think it's when Nuno went through the stage of, like, not using a lot of subs. Um, and people are saying kids aren't want to, gonna want to come here because they're not gonna get game time. They're not gonna play. But if I was nineteen twenty playing abroad and Wolves were in the Europa League, said, right, I want you. We want you to come play for us. Regardless, really, I think if they said, right, you're gonna be a squad player, you'd probably say yes. Regardless, would you? Like, probably get a move to the Championship if it didn't work out. Like, that, well, that's what I mean. You probably, like, I know, saying you know, why would you join Wolves as a kid? You probably say yes because you, all you know, same with Jimenez. Jimenez got an injury. Campana came in for a game, scored one or two goals. He could be the new number nine next season. All you could need, be, like, happened to so many Rafa players. Rafa waiting in the wings. <laughs> Rafa <laughs> Oh, he's another one as well. Yeah, Been man. linked with Atletico Madrid. Don't know what's going on there. Got um, lost in translation now. Uh, probably, probably Atletico Madrid. B or Castillo or the Atletico Wigan yeah <laughs> uh, I mean let's quickly shoot through the rest of these um, can you see us bringing in quality to compete for European places again next season um, no I actually can't you can't see a big winner I think it is going to be as I think we've said it is going to be a very very we interesting one. we need one yeah. but I just don't think we're going to see I'd like us to bring in like three players for like 30 million you know, real yeah. intent, or like two players for like forty million each, something like that. That's what I'd love to see, but I just don't think I just don't think we will. I don't think that's anything to do with the market. I just, I just, I just don't think that Wolves will, will do that. But yeah. they need to, I think. Jay Wilkes has said, "My question would be, why for two seasons have we operated with only one striker? Although obviously we have played with two strikers." quite a lot last season as well how would either of the last two seasons have played out if Raul had got a long term injury and wouldn't he be even better if he was fresh can't go on for another season I mean we've addressed that haven't we we have said a backup striker is needed really and obviously it's going to be even more of a concern if Raul does move on um, so yeah I think we've more or less answered that one as well mm -hmm. uh, Lamar Carlin says what are Wolves realistic aims next season both if we get Champions League and if we don't Think go for Europe again, surely. If you know you're expecting, you're expecting almost a guaranteed top six, or, or you'd hope for a top six if Wolves aren't in Europe next if season. If we aren't in Europe next season, I want us to. Either, I know these are big expectations, but break into the top six, top five, or win a cup. Oh, win a cup would be unbelievable. As long as we don't have to go through 
I, I want them to say, right, next season, fans are back, but they're going to be in, not not Wembley, they'll be in neutral grounds next season. And, you know, we can save Wembley to the final. I can't be doing with a London London trip twice again. That no, was painful. Shit is the last one at Wembley. <laughs> <laughs> that was painful, that was. But, yeah, oh, yeah I, I think, you know, if we're not in Champions League, you've got to be, we've got to be aiming for a European finish, regardless. Get ourselves back in there again. Um, I hope, I really do hope fans... You know, if we if we struggle in the Europa League, we get knocked out. I really hope fans aren't expecting a guaranteed top four next season because I think it could get <laughs> quite messy on social media again. Nah, because we were in, we played Crawley a few years ago, lads. So uh. if we went down, it'd be sound. <laughs> it's uh, uh, as long as we keep improving, like I said, we players keep improving, keep improving. As long as the club and we improve year on year, then I'm happy. Yeah. Um, if we finished eleventh. And went to an FA Cup semi final and God forbid lost again and we weren't in Europe then I, yeah yeah we've gone backwards. So as long as we keep improving and I don't mean points totals, I mean positions, then um then yeah I'll, I'll be happy. So sixth play finish and a, 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 an FA Cup would be sound, yeah. Be all over that. Uh Jacko has said Oh, he's put on popular opinion, but with the potential sale of Raul, my question is how important is he? With the figures being thrown around of 60 to 75 million, is that something we can't turn down? Surely we can replace him easier than the likes of Neves, Bolly, and even Cody? Who's going to buy um, Cody? <laughs> but, no, no, like I think he's saying, I, I think he's saying, if we ever lost those three, they would be harder to replace than Raul, which I, to be honest, I disagree with. I think there's quite a few players on the continent like Neves, but just because he's so young and got so much experience already, you could probably go and sign someone who's like 27, 28, could do the same job as Neves, like as probably as, as well as him. Um, again, it would cost a lot of money, but I think what Jimenez brings to the team and the system, it would be so hard to just get someone who could integrate straight into that. You will not. It will be so hard to find a player who's going to bag you guaranteed 15 goals in the Premier League. Mm. It it will be so hard to find, and then you're talking big books. I know this season you got the likes of Danny Ings who did really well, um, and Vardy again as per. But either of those, I think Ings or Vardy, you're gonna spend forty million, fifty million plus four because yeah, I'd like, I like Ings. Well. I really, really like Ings. I think, but I don't think we'd we'd go for him. And if you'd have said to me at the start of the season, Wolves are gonna sign Danny Ings, I'd have been a bit disappointed. <laughs> Yeah. Now obviously it's a different story, but he's, he's really kept, kept fit for the first time in his career, really, hasn't he? Yeah. I think that's a big like thing. As well. I think he's a really good player. Very tidy yeah. as well. Like, he's not just a finisher. He's good on the ball. He's quick. Good player. I like him. Yeah. Um, another one on Twitter. Do you think it's more important to keep hold of the big names at the club instead of selling and replacing just to make profit with Fosun as an investment company? I think surely Fosun will look at the club first before mm. realizing they're going to make a fair whack on a player. They're going to do what's think, best for the club. I think. Surely. I don't think like. Being sustainable is an issue it's because yeah. of how um, how, how, our role, how big our roles has been so quickly. Yeah, I don't I don't know, but if someone comes in and offers you eighty million for him, and it's just, they're gonna they're gonna say yeah. And I think even Nuno would be like, you know what, what what can you do in this situation? Well, yeah. Every every player's got his price, and like you said, Fosun and an investment company. If they were to sell the club now, they'd probably make four hundred million easily. Um, because I think aren't Wolves to sell like Wolves? Yeah, I think they valued it like four hundred and fifty million or something like that, or four hundred million. I think it was about three fifty, but still, it, it is a massive rise. And it they is a massive. It for, what thirty five, something like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, in th- in two or three years, they're going to be making at, at least three hundred. It's gone million. quite on that investment front, hasn't it? As well, they said they were looking for investors. What last year? I mean, there's not really been anything yeah. on that, has there? I mean, really? they they borrowed fifty million again from the bank. Uh, they did it last season. Yeah, for, I think most. Um, yeah, it's most just borrowed against the t- TV revenue because the revenue from the Premier League can be sl- lot erratic in terms of when it comes and how much it comes in. So yeah. they just borrowed against it just for cash flow reasons, nothing to worry about. But um, yeah, it has gone quite quiet. That I did register to be a. Uh, uh, What's you, being in? Fe- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't you know do how big the shares are going to be, but. <laughs> Okay, yeah, well, lads, I've just I've just bought 0.01% in Wolves for 150 quid. <laughs> I've just brought one of him and his bootlaces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough to buy him a new pair. <laughs> um, quickly going on to Instagram, I've got some questions. Do you think our transfer tactics have worked in the past? I know we spoke about this. Uh, this is from Horton018 on Instagram. 
Should we apply them going forwards, or do we need to start spending big to breach the gap to the top four? So I think what he's saying is obviously we've got some very clever signings, but if we want to start knocking on the door, are we going to have to start spending a bit more money? Yeah, I think so. To take us to the next level, um, yeah. I think we are going to have to spend a bit more, though. I think this is our transfer record, isn't it? 30 million. Yeah. I think you're going to have to break that again um, this summer. But I don't, know if, I don't know if they will or not. I mean, interesting. Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll get a decent yeah. amount of money after the Europa League finish. You know, we're going to get a bit of money off that. Obviously, you've got your Premier League money coming in again. I think we just got. I don't know when the TV thing renews. Whenever that renews, you get a load of money, don't you? You know, when they yeah, well, like renew I said, it's a little bit erratic, like in how it how it yeah. is released. So that's why they borrowed the fifty million, and yeah. well, the actual the actual interest on that is probably like one or two million or something. Not a lot of yeah. money, but I'll say that a lot of money. It's more than most of you got for football. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you think of that chance of winning the Europa I mean this is a question that I know a lot of people have asked uh, this is from Barrett on Instagram I know Adam Sidaway has asked as well what do you think our chances are at winning the Europa League or just predictions of the Europa League if we don't win what will be our chances to qualify next season so I think we've spoke more or less about obviously chances to qualify and we've ch uh, spoke about European football we'll, we'll leave that for a sec that question uh, the last one's from Matt on Instagram with Arsenal winning the FA Cup, how do you feel with a lack of European football? How will it affect our chances in the transfer market? Obviously, this depends on Europa League too, but who knows? A lot of the questions are much of much just really, Matt. That question we've answered, I think, saying, you know, in terms of signing players, we are probably going to not struggle, but you're probably not going to attract as big a names as you would if you were in European competition. I think that's a given, though. Like, oh, going back to the point I made about like, West Ham, you know, like this season we would have been a more attractive proposition than, than West Ham because just as an example because we're in the Europa League but now although we are better than them and that's you know and everyone can see that it's like well are you going to attract someone to come and live in Wolverhampton we know your Europa League football or you're going to live in London we know your European football that's the only thing yeah. that concerns me a little bit um, yeah but of course, you are going to attract better players if you're in a more esteemed competition. That's just it's just common sense, isn't it? So, look, I don't think we still are attractive proposition. You're going to come to a club where you're going to be playing some really good players. I mean, you know, experienced players like Patricio, Matinho, good young players like Adama and Neves. We are still going to be attractive, but there are more attractive clubs out there in the league who are going to be. Yeah, who are in in Europe? So, would would you rather sign for Everton over Wolves? Well, Everton may pay you a little bit more money, but you know, again, uh, who knows? They're the type of clubs who I think we should be battling with. If you look at like Chelsea and stuff, they just blow us out of the water with the, the dough that they've got and the dough that they've spent. Yeah. I mean, bringing Ziyech in, uh, Werner, potentially Kai Havertz as well. Like the. Uh, the yeah, they're world class players who would get into most teams so again they're going to be improving so I think we'll be competing with teams like Everton um, mm -hmm. in terms of transfer spends and players that we get, we're going after and yeah, I'll probably fancy us over Everton the only thing that they've got is probably could pay a little bit more money so some of their earners I think like Yerry Mean is on close like £110,000 a week it's madness it? absolutely yeah. mad days and they, uh, yeah. Mashiri's not tight on the old purse strings so Again, mm. but who knows? Well, let's let's end it with our Europa predictions, Matt. What do you reckon? What round do you reckon we'll get to? Semi final. Semi final. Get United. I think United might be us in the semi final. United into final. I'd assume you reckon. Yeah, yeah. I think you know. I think you know. I think it'll be United into Milan final. Well, I'm gonna back. I'm gonna back it. Uh, let's. I'm gonna say final. Just. Just to be different, I'll say the final for Are they win it? If I speak, I'm in big trouble. <laughs> if we don't win a Europa League final, I'm just going to award him. It's just not going to be worth going out. <laughs> Especially living in West Brom. I've already been yeah. told that we bottle everything that they're coming for us, so I'll just top it off. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. I want us to get to the final, but I, I don't know. Have we got enough to win it? That's, that's the big question. But um, guys, if you have enjoyed it today obviously on the podcast be sure to leave us a rating if you're listening on uh, apple Podcasts. uh be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're listening on uh, and watching on youtube matt uh if people were to find you on social media where can they find you 
Um, M. Cooper writes, writes is in written on Twitter and Instagram. And David, where can they find you? At Dave as a party on uh, on Twitter and obviously for Talking Walls at Talking Walls everywhere Twitter Instagram Facebook and YouTube. Uh, Matt, it's been a pleasure. Next time we'll speak, it will be after the Europa League. So fingers crossed, Wolves will be uh, you know have, have a successful finish of the season. And obviously, we'll probably have some more transfer news. But keep an eye out on the socials uh, if you want to get your questions in. Thanks a lot for all the support on the question front as well today. Loads to talk about. Hopefully, you guys are looking after yourself. Keep safe. And uh, see you next time.